Welcome to another edition of Bar Downloadable. We got more Call of Duty Esports action for you with another window into the scene, this time with pro player himself, Anthony Method. Zinni, welcome to the show. Thank you. I appreciate it. Hope you guys have been doing well over there. I mean, crazy we're times. Things. Exactly. We're all in isolation, you yourself included, of course. Um, before we get into a little Zinni backstory, though, uh, since quarantine season really kicked off here, I feel like you've been playing a lot of Warzone, and you've been yeah. playing a lot of Warzone with Leaf Star Mitch Marner. So, how did that relationship come about? Yeah, so I think I forget exactly, but I know he followed me, and then I DM'd him, and he's like, pumped you followed me we started playing a lot and we've grown to be pretty good friends now like we facetime the other day to help him set up his new astro headset we're we're turning him into a full-time gamer now so i think uh he's gonna have a tough decision when the league comes back whether to be a, a call of duty pro or uh stay in the nhl yeah. yo that's some spice tea right there ziddy uh really because i've been watching some of his streams too he's quite good he's good at first person shooters you can yeah, tell he's pretty that good. he yeah, he gravitates towards that. So I need to know, though, has it become a liability for you when you're playing? How many dubs are you guys actually getting? Are you carrying a lot of the time? Listen, I always carry, you know, but like, no, nah, he, he's actually pretty good. We, we got a decent amount of wins. It, it depends who we play with. Um, sometimes we play with his brother and his friend and the games mm -hmm. are like super fun. His brother's hilarious. We just talk about McDonald's and eating food all day. Sometimes we'll get uh, exposed in or, or a couple other pros. It's... We've switched around a bit, but I would say most of the time it's uh it's fun games, a lot of wins, and surprisingly he's gotten a a lot better. He's definitely improved. Like good enough to maybe one day get recruited onto the Toronto Ultra. If he's taking my spot, maybe. I mean, he may be better <laughs> than me soon. Okay, we know that's not true. Uh, Zinni, you were one of the youngest pros to actually join call of duty as a pro when the scene was with the cwl forever ago i think even before that i mean you've been here for a minute i think you said the only mistake you made during your time as a pro was missing out on a tournament because you wanted to go to your senior prom um Good give memory. us a little yeah give us a little tldr on your path to pro here yeah so i placed pro at age 15 basically at age like 13 14 i started going to these local tournaments i started quitting sports i was a little chubby kid so my parents were really confused Back then, esports wasn't mainstream like it is now. Like, there wasn't really these big big crowds to show or anything. But I went to a couple locals, made friends with some uh, influential people named Nate Shot and Scump, and uh, Hex, Hector Rodriguez. Those are pretty much my mentors coming up. Just really helped me along the way. If I tweeted something dumb, they'd tell me to delete it. I went to a local tournament in Philly with Nate Shot and Scump. Ended up winning it, and my dad came along. And Nate Shot talked to my dad and was like, your son has a future in this. And keep in mind, Nate Shot's sponsored by Rebel at this time. He's making a lot of money. He's mm -hmm. got a huge fan base. So ever since then, my parents have been fully supportive, like just uh, more supportive than I could ever thank them for. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, age 15, first ever MLG event, MLG Dallas. We ended up placing top eight. We actually lost in the first round of the tournament and came back from losers round one all the way to top eight. So I think we played like 10 or 12 hours straight to make it. That's insane, that kind of stress. Yeah, it was uh, it was crazy. But yeah, I, at that time, I was the youngest pro player in the world. Obviously, as more players come in, that changes quickly. But at one point, I was the youngest player in the world. And uh, it's crazy to consider I'm, I'm basically a fossil of this scene, even though I'm only 22, <laughs> you know? I know you're such a baby. I was talking about that with Maven. I'm like, yeah, his ripe old age of 22. You're literally a veteran now yeah. in this scene. But okay, like you had a little back step there with prom. You you regretted going to prom. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I wouldn't. Looking back at it, I, I would have chose X Games just because I thought in my mind, I'm like, okay, there's one senior prom. There's going to mm -hmm. be more X Games. And it just so happens that there weren't any more X Games. Yeah. And I also thought it was a good time to take a step back at that time, just because I wasn't old enough for COD Champs. Like, I think this was the third or fourth year in a row where I wasn't old enough to compete at the biggest tournament in the world. And it was kind of demoralizing because I built myself up to these top teams and get released because I wasn't old enough. For example, yeah. FaZe Clan in 2014, we had a pretty good team, but unfortunately they had to let me go because of my age. But yeah, I, I took that time to uh, sort of enjoy the rest of my senior year because I would say my entire high school life was just focused on grinding video games and I really didn't get a chance to enjoy anything else so I kind of enjoyed that social aspect of high school for the last few months um, of my senior year and I came back to Call of Duty. I mean yeah obviously it worked out for you in the end you're now signed to one of the franchise teams 
in the CDO, which of course is in its inaugural season, you had an incredible weekend. So we have to talk about this. I mean, first of all, going into this weekend, um, you guys weren't sitting very high on the leaderboard. Um, no. You've had some struggles in weeks past. So what changed for you guys? I think we just got a lot of good consistent practice with the, the right five. You know, we have a 10-man roster. We've switched things up quite a bit. It, it's taken a bit to sort of figure out who we want to play with on any given weekend. And I think this is probably the most practice we've had before an event. Unfortunately, now we have another month break to get even more practice, which is a, a blessing and a curse. You know, we really want to get back on that battlefield, especially after this, uh, in our in our hearts, disappointing weekend. You know, it, it may be, um, it definitely opened some eyes to our team. That being said, we didn't win the tournament. We didn't play second. We fell short to a team that we think we're better than them. We beat the Minnesota Rocker and the New York Subliners, who I would argue are probably stronger respawn teams than Optic Gaming, and then Optic Gaming came out and took two respawns against us, so it was frustrating, especially for me, because I, I, I don't think I played my part well enough in those respawns, especially when I've been having a killer weekend like I did. It's uh, I, I told my team you can put that one on me, because uh, I was really upset with my performance in those respawns, but I mean, looking at our team compared to where we were I'm I'm happy for the progress I'm definitely proud of all the guys for stepping up and playing their role I just wish we could have uh, made the made the finals which you know I honestly think we should have but we go again shortly and I'm looking forward to it now I feel like you have something special here you have a little flint a little fire that you can build off of so what do you think the major thing is that you guys need to know and need to change going into the next competitive weekend I think we need to I, th I think we're a really good team, but we need to iron out like those inconsistencies, whereas sometimes we're really, really hot, but sometimes we can be a little chilly. And uh, I think in this at this point in the game, when the competition's at its highest, we really need everybody firing on all cylinders, all on the same page, and pretty much just playing together as one. We made a few vital mistakes in that uh, Optic series that still haunt me in my in my dreams every night. I wish I got that 1v3. That would have been uh, insane because I think we would have went up 5-3 last map and at that point the, the game probably would have been over. So there's been a, a lot of haunting moments to, to watch back and, and think about. But I'm uh, I'm excited that everybody started to consider us a, a contender. You know, mm -hmm. we, we showed that we can beat the best of the best. And I mean, even looking back to some LAN events, like in Atlanta, we lost to Chicago game five last round. Like... It's not like we've ever been far behind. It's just so that we weren't really closing out games. And now that we've proved that we can close out some games, I think teams are starting to get a little worried. Fair enough. We never think about that. As audience members, I'm guilty of not even thinking about or realizing the amount of moments that actually sit with you after a game. Like for you to just think of that 1v3 and to yeah. know that like you could have had it. It could have gone a different way. How long do those moments sit with you and how do you brush them off? They pretty much sit with you until the next tournament, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? As soon as the next tournament starts, you're sort of in a completely new mindset, just excited to play, you know, it's a whole new ball game. But uh, now that we have like a month break, it's it's haunting because you, you think about it and you watch it back like countless times, and you're like, if I hit one more bullet, my life could have been changed. Like that 1v3 could have went viral, my team could have made finals, we could have won the finals, like that could have changed Toronto Ultra forever. Yeah. So... It's uh, It sucks, but I'm still confident in what we do. I mean, at the end of the day, I want this team to be the best it possibly can at the end of the game where the big mm -hmm. tournament comes around. That's the most important. Like, uh, I'd rather not peak now. I'd rather peak then. So just going to keep working. I love that mentality for sure. You guys have had to switch it up, though, because, of course, you were playing on land. You were playing in front of crowds. You were playing with yeah. just a big show. And now you are confined to your individual room. So how has communication been and how has it shifted? And are you feeling a little lackluster when you're stepping up for competition because you don't feel that crowd around you? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, something I tell my team, it's, it's really important that we go into this with the same intensity and the, the same thought process that we would on an actual local area tournament. It, um, it's tough because, like you said, we are in these small rooms in our apartments and trying to bring the same intensity that we'd bring on a stage in front of hundreds or thousands to a room by yourself. It's definitely uh, an adjustment, but I think if we're able to keep our heads in the game and just 
sort of put ourselves in that position, like sort of mm -hmm. just picture yourself in front of that crowd, I, I think we'll have the edge on our opponents because I definitely think some teams have taken their foot off the pedal a little bit because of the change in format and, and the way mm -hmm. things are set up now. But hopefully uh, come uh, the final event, we're, we're back on land. But communication, I'd say, has been uh, pretty solid. We still... Uh, we still watch film every night on, on the computer, you know, it, it, the, the one thing I've been telling everybody is that the good thing about being a gamer, it's kind of like we've been self-isolating for our entire careers, like our, our entire careers have kind of been talking to our friends online, and I, I, I have this joke where we, uh, all my friends, we, we talk on a server, and that's kind of like the gamer equivalent of like going to the bar with your friends, so we, we're kind of already used to being um, confined. I would say now it's a little different because we were used to going to the facility and going over VODs in person, but really uh, really not that big of an adjustment for, for gamers. I know, it's so true. I, a lot of people are saying that to me too, like, oh, you must be loving this. You have so many video games. Like, you guys, yeah. I've been telling you to play video games from time, so like maybe this is the moment. Just find something, find something that might be your niche, like Warzone. So many people playing Warzone, yourself oh, yeah. included. Uh, just I feel like you're dropping in a lot. So does that, does Warzone gameplay affect your actual competitive gameplay in any way no they're kind of just two completely different entities you know what i mean they're warzone just that fun game to relieve stress i mean at the same time you're still shooting the same guns so i mean it, it, it definitely helps just keep your um I guess, I guess your shot warm just because you're still running around a map you're still touching a controller you're still shooting at enemies but when it comes to actual like the the mindset and and the way you have to play competitively, it's it's not it's not even close. Like it's just two different games. But Warzone, I'm loving it. it. It's so fun. It's like that great stress reliever after scrims. You just go have a good time. And I also like that it's bringing people to Call of Duty. Whereas these other big streamers, they were playing different games, and now it seems like everybody is kind of gathered on Warzone and everybody's having a blast. So I think that definitely helps us as well because the more eyes on Call of Duty. It's just better for all of us. I 100% agree, especially with all these athletes dropping in. Like, so yeah. many athletes on this. We had, like, you and I did a charity stream a little while ago. We had football players, like NFL stars doing it. Uh, we had hockey players that were talking about it. Even Zach Hyman was playing some Warzone as well. Like, we just have a lot of different athletes jumping in and bringing some light to this yeah. scene, which, of course, warms my heart completely. I want to talk about you because you're an American boy. Now... Yeah. In Toronto, you're living here, and I feel like you just got here that, of course, COVID hit and you're confined to your apartment. But from what you have seen from Toronto, have you enjoyed it so far? Yes, I'm a big foodie. I, I love the restaurants, some uh, some good bars I've been to. I've been to the Eaton Center, I've been to Ripley's Aquarium, The uh, I think it's the York, Yorkville Mall, or is it the Yorkdale? Yorkdale, it's, but hitting the spots. Okay, yeah, Yorkdale. So I've been to Kensington Market, uh, the Distillery District. I've definitely seen quite a bit. I, I have been hearing that summer in Toronto is like the best, and I, people keep telling me that Toronto will be my favorite city in the summer, so I'm kind of bummed that it's looking like we're not really going to be able to experience it um, in the proper fashion, yeah. especially being new. I was Actually, Mitch, I was talking to Mitch last night, and he was like, dude, I can't imagine living in the city for my first time and not being able to uh, enjoy what the city has to offer. You get a few more weeks, and you will get to experience it a little bit. I mean, you just have to, I guess, take in the city and go for a walk or something. There won't yeah. be any awesome restaurant time that I know you love but you yeah. are a chef within your own rights you have been <laughs> posting different videos of chefs in uh are we gonna see a show soon from you like a real life show or are you gonna be the next Gordon Ramsay like what are your plans here uh time will tell I mean really just going with the flow my girlfriend actually moved back home so I don't have the person to record uh, my videos anymore so I'm gonna have to start recruiting my coach or uh, no. or something, and and uh, a quick hint: my girlfriend actually helps a lot in those videos. She may or may not set everything up and <laughs> cook a lot of it when I'm off camera. But I, I uh, <laughs> I'm definitely listen. I made chicken parm by myself the other night, like all by myself, and it was delicious. I posted a picture on my Twitter. I'm getting there. I made a taco salad last night. I'm I'm, I'm still working, but uh, we'll see we'll see what the future holds for Chef Tony. Listen, it's fine. We're all kind of dealing with the same things. You, you've you now decided to become Zorro <laughs> as well. So you want to talk You want to talk about that stash? You, It's been memed a lot now just within the yeah. Call of Duty community. So uh, what happened was I went to trim my beard because I had a pretty long beard at this point. I really didn't shave it since quarantine begun, and I screwed it up. So I had to shave it all off, and I was like, you know what? Let's keep the mustache. Let's see what, uh, what people think. And... 
I kind of just thought it'd be a good thing for content, like Chef Tony, like, oh, this will be funny. He only has a mustache now. <laughs> but uh, now after this weekend, I, I played pretty well. My team played pretty well. So now it's kind of like I'm put in a spot where I'm most likely going to keep it for a little bit, even though, I mean, I'm, I'm a fan of it, but I'm not the biggest fan. I mean, I've heard Freddie Mercury. I've heard Austin Matthews. I've heard Pablo Escobar. I've heard, I've heard so many. Di- I heard Mario. I've heard so many different names, but. Uh, funny enough, my dad actually had a mustache like this growing up, where like he actually loved it and and just had it. So uh, I never thought I'd I'd rock something like this. So it's it's definitely funny to see. <laughs> it's a new mature you. You're your old age of 22, and now you've yeah. grown into the stash. The stash is <laughs> you, and it just needs to keep rolling. Like as long as you're winning, I'm happy to see it. Yeah, I mean, if we're winning, like it can't go anywhere. <laughs> Trash talk is obviously a part of the game, and it's uh led to some, I mean, pretty intense rivalries in the scene. I'm not sure if it's carried over into this particular season, this new franchise season of Call of Duty Esports, but in the past and years past, I've noticed that there has kind of been a line in the sand, especially with like, there was like Clayster and Jcap beef last season. Has that any of that carried over? Has all of that kind of fizzled? Are you guys all bros now? Yeah, I don't think there's actually any um, rivalries right now. I mean, mm-hmm. you have like city city stuff. Like for example, us versus Minnesota Rockers, uh, a pretty good rivalry. But I would say player to player. At, at the end of the day, I mean, there may be fights and some beef here and there, but we've all grown up together. Like we've all been doing this for like seven to ten years together, like all knowing each other. So I would say usually mo- most of the beef passes. Actually, that uh, there's definitely some beef between Chicago and uh, Dallas. I would definitely say that there's a little rivalry there. Other than that, I, I really don't think there's many uh, rivalries right now. Well, I mean, you are known to stir the pot just a little bit on your Twitter. Of course, you're there for jokes, absolutely, and it's all in good fun. But sometimes you, you really flame people oh, yeah. on, there, on there. Tell yeah, us about your Twitter game. I, I don't hold back. I mean, it, I would say I do it more on stream than I do it on Twitter. I try my best to be as uh, comedic and... and um, respectful and professional on Twitter, whereas on my stream is when you actually hear me talk to these people. For example, like there there are some players who who haven't played well in matches and then I play them in a pro pickup game and they, they go nuts and I'm like, yo, where is this in matches? So I mean I uh I would say I'm probably one of the few who doesn't get under people's skin. You know what I mean? People kinda know my personality and they've known me for so long that they know for the most part it's just jokes. Yeah. Obviously here and there it can get a little heated but I would say I kind of I kind of got gifted where I can kind of talk trash and these players really don't they kind of just laugh it off. Right, like we have compared you to Kevin Durant in the past just with the way that you tweet, but KD yeah. usually has some like vitriol, usually has some kind of vendetta behind the tweets that he has. I'm assuming you don't have burner accounts where you're DMing yeah. people that have <laughs> yeah, sent no, you. I make it a start. Nasty. Like every I'm about to start <laughs> replying to every tweet. You said method sucks, you're out of your mind. Lola. Well, uh. <laughs> Just with your next burner account. I mean, listen, I'll watch out for it for sure. Your tweets are constantly entertaining me. Such a good follow. Um, just from Thank the beginning, you. even when I first started watching COD, like you were one of the first people I followed. Just because you have that awesome window into it and you take everything with a grain of salt, I feel like you're pretty lighthearted when it comes to anything you tweet. But I feel like I feel like there must have been one or two tweets that have gotten you into a little bit of trouble. Yeah, definitely in the earlier side of my career where... Well, like I said, like Nature Hut and Seth and Hector used to tell me to delete stuff just because I would tweet. Like I, I, for example, I tweet song lyrics and I put words in there that I shouldn't have put in there. Sure. And they'd be like, "Delete that. What are you doing?" I'm like, "It's song lyrics." They're like, "It doesn't matter. Go delete that." Mm-hmm. And um, I think back then I was just, I didn't think before doing anything. Back when I was a little younger, like I would just tweet or say stuff, and mm-hmm. it definitely got me into uh, some trouble a couple times here and there, but. I can't remember a time where a tweet has actually got me in. Like, I've never been fined or anything. Like, mm-hmm. I know some players have been fined for tweets, but sure. not me, you know. <laughs> not me. Just rolls right off the back. Uh, yeah. No, I feel like you you guys have also had some training. You have some media training as well with this new league. It's been cleaned up a little bit compared to years past in Call of Duty. Are you noticing a shift? Yeah, I mean, I always get angry at my uh, peers when they tweet stuff just because it hurts all of us you know what I mean like when you see negative don't get me wrong I've sent my fair share of negative tweets but I think now more than ever it's important to be as professional as you can on Twitter it's important that we keep the the reputation of Call of Duty esports as positive as it can be because we want to grow the viewership and bring people in and not cheer people away 
So it, it definitely ticks me off when we have uh, some of my friends tweeting and uh, most of the time they do it just for laughs or likes yeah. and I'm like, that's not worth what it can actually do. You know what I mean? It never is, especially when it comes to your bottom dollar, right? Because that could also affect sponsorship deals that you guys get yep, or like you individually or your friends. So like, it's good that I, I feel like just in general, the Call, of, the Call of Duty scene is maturing. Like even though we've changed to franchise now, I feel like because you guys are getting older as well, you're seeing the value in certain things that you bring to the table. So it's reflecting, I feel like really positively on the scene as a whole. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. Zinni, I absolutely love chatting with you. You've always been one of my favorites in this scene. Plus, I mean, we're Paisan, so that helps <laughs> as well. Uh, I will continue to cheer you guys on as well. I know you have a month here uh, in the interim, but um, good luck with practices and good luck with the next one. We'll be on your side. Thank you. Appreciate you guys having me on and stay safe. <laughs>